Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacey with me. Hello. And we're talking about taking on the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm bringing Stacy in because, <laughs> you know, she's the church lady. <laughs> and we want to get her understanding of what it means to take on the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. How do you take on the name of Christ? Right. So that's my question, right? Yeah. So um, when I hear take on the name of Christ, um, I immediately think about um, the attributes of Christ, his characteristics, the things that he's did, the things that he taught, um, how he moved. Um, that's what I um, that's what I think about when I think on taking upon his name. And I say that because um, the example I want to give is um, when I was a child, my grandpa used to say a lot, um, all I got is my name. Um, so, and by that, what I took he meant was, um, the things, what his name was worth, um, in the community, um, how he moved, how he act, um, how he lived, so that meaning of hearing him say that um, for a very very long time and um, just gave me um, I guess I took him on that understanding of what it means to take up on someone's name and I'm reading here on Google the question how can we take upon ourselves the name of Christ it says, in order for individuals to take the name of Christ upon themselves, they must faithfully strive to see as God sees, and do his work and serve as he served, and trust him. So, to take upon the name of Christ, according to what these guys are saying, you have to know who he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in order to have the name of Christ, you're going to have to go to church. Or you're going to have to read the Bible. Yeah. You're going to have to, yeah. I would say read the Bible. I don't know about going to church. That probably, at one time I would have said, yeah. But not now, no. But, yeah. So, you have to read the entire Bible? Or can you just read bits and pieces of it? No. I believe that you need to strive to read the entire Bible. So, unless you read the entire Bible, you ain't got the name of Christ. Because you can't see as he sees, and you don't know how to serve as he served. You don't know him. You definitely have a lesser um, understanding of who he is. Definitely. you. I mean, you pretty much have to read the entire Bible in order to understand who he is. Yeah, yeah because every word, every uh, precept, every chapter um, gives you a greater understanding of who he is. So, if that was true... How many people have we just eliminated from having the name of Christ? Because only 4% of professing Christians say they have read the Bible. In other words, if you take all of the Christians in the world, 4 in 100 say they have read the Bible. So with 4% of professing Christians saying they read the Bible, that would mean that a very, very tiny percent of the entire world actually has the name of Christ. Yeah, if this meaning is um, is true. Yeah, it starts to sound like you're having a little bit of doubts. Um, not that I'm having doubts, um, because um, I guess this meaning is different from the meaning that I'm saying. Um, what meaning are you saying? Well, I'm saying the attributes, they're saying... Um, are they saying to be, believe in believe in him? Is is that what what this meaning is saying? Well, we can't go by just this meaning. We're over here on Google trying to get an understanding of what the world thinks when they think about taking on the name of Christ. And this is just an example. And they say it's faithfully strive to see as God sees mm -hmm. and serve as He served. And from this. We are deducing that the only way that you can see as God sees is if you read the Bible. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's correct. I, I agree with that. So, 
anybody who hasn't read the Bible doesn't have the name of Christ, if that were true. Because you can't see as he sees. You have you like we said, if, if you haven't read the Bible, you don't really know who God is. You really don't understand. I mean, what's going on? Nobody can preach to you the entire Bible and give you the complete message of how God sees. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much have to read it yourself and you probably have to read it more than once. I know I did. I agree. Yeah. And then add that to the fact that the Bible didn't come out until 1611 in English. So that would have meant that nobody before 1611 mm -hmm. had the name of Christ. So we think of all of the people that ever existed on the world. There's seven or eight billion people here now. Add that to the number of people that used to be here and are gone. We can get up into the hundreds of billions of people. But out of that number, how many of them have actually read the entire Bible and gone on to read it multiple times so that they can see how God sees and they can serve how God serves? Mm, so are we we're talking about going back to the days of when um even before Messiah the Messiah and, and days like that too? It would have included. How would you have seen how God sees? Without the scripture. Now I'm arguing that that is the only way that you're gonna be able to see as God sees. Otherwise you're just making stuff up. Without the scripture as a blueprint, that's what he wrote here to tell us how he sees. So without it, you don't see how he sees. And if this argument, what they're saying is true, you don't have the name of Christ hmm. because you don't see as he sees. Here's another one. To take his name upon us means that we must see ourselves as his. We must put him first in our lives. We will want what he wants rather than what we want or what the world teaches us to want. That's saying the same thing. Yeah, that's saying the same thing as the first one. So again, you got to read the entire Bible before you get the name of Christ. Does that sound true to you? Does that really sound like reality? I don't know because... Um, we, we have the, basically the, these, um, these two quotes, um, basically saying the same thing, but I don't know. I don't know if, if, if there, if we're going, we're, we can conclude to saying that if you don't read the Bible, then you don't know no Christ. Well, let me ask you, have you read every word in the Bible? No, I have not. So, with what we're saying here, you don't have the name of Christ. That, that would be what we're saying, yeah. Do you believe that you don't have the name of Christ? Um, going by this here definition. No, going by your own personal life experience. Do you believe you have the name of Christ? I believe that I have I am striving for the name of Christ do I have all of his characteristics no do I have all of his attributes no I do not do I do everything he says for me to do um, no no I do not do I follow each and every one of his doctrines the correct way uh, no I do not so notice how Based on man's definition of taking on the name of Christ, you are now in doubt as to whether you actually have his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that sound right? That don't that sound right. Not, that doesn't sound right at all because if you would have asked me before we read these definitions, I would have said, yeah. Starting about, <laughs> about 15 minutes ago, you had the name of Christ, but yeah. now you don't know so much. Yeah, now I'm like down. <laughs> I'll probably be down all day. <laughs> so could it be that their understanding is error? Yeah, because something's wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, I I think so, and I'm like, okay, are we just gonna go by these names, or are we gonna look something else up? Because look, because look, think about it like this: How hard is it to read the Bible before the Father actually gives you the inspiration to do so? Most people can't read the Bible. 
Mm mm. You can't. You, you can't. can't read it without him, and you're definitely not going to understand it without him. Yeah, you know they have a uh, sort of a little funny saying that if you you know if you can't fall asleep, then start reading the Bible, and yeah, then it's you know knock you out, yeah, yeah, it's gonna knock you out. And I find that true too. You know, before I um, started actually reading for myself, I would take my little notes that I got from the sermon at church, and I would go home and try to read them, and they never did make sense. You know, I never could get the exact understanding of what the pastor was saying what i was reading what my spirit man was telling me and so eventually i just put it down and walked away so you have to have the holy spirit to help you to read the bible in the first place and to get an understanding of what is actually saying yeah if you truly want to get an understanding so how are you going to have the holy spirit if you don't have the name of christ I don't think you can. Can you? No. Nope. But notice how these definitions are falling apart. Yeah. Notice how what they're saying is is not holding water at all. Mm-hmm. It's like saying it's 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 like it, it's backwards saying that you have to know what the Bible says and you have to know all about how Christ served and what He did in order to have His name, but you can't understand the Scripture without having His name first. Right. That's what it's saying. But that's not true. You don't believe it's true. I don't think it's true. It's what do not. you think? Well, I don't believe that it is. Like I said, I don't believe that it is even possible to pick up the Bible and read it before you have the name of Christ. So there's no way for you to know how he served or to see how God sees before you have the name of Christ. You have to have the name of Christ first. That has to come first. Then you're able to learn from the scripture. Yeah, because I know that there's been times when before you started reading the Bible, you have set your course to, I'm going to walk as Christ going to walk. I'm going to do the things that he's going to do. And every single time you do it for a couple of days, and then you fall right back to where you was at. It's always temporary. And that was, that was that's what was going on with me. But, like you said, when you have the Holy Spirit, now you have the extra helper. Now you have the extra strength. And now you can um, maneuver into doing the things that he's done and walking the way that he has. Um, whereas, before so you just couldn't do it no matter how hard and how hard how hard you try and how hard you pray okay so now we've destroyed this definition this whole understanding who Christ is and seeing ourselves as he is and putting him first in our lives and all of this stuff that you get after the fact now that we have established that this definitely ain't the way to take on the name of Christ, I ask you again, how do you take on the name of Christ? And I give you permission to kind of make stuff up. <laughs> because I've destroyed your definition already. Um, so if this ain't right, mm -hmm. what would you say is right? And we'll give you a moment to think about it. I guess what's popping up in my mind now is baptism. Baptism? Yeah. How is that popping up in your mind? Because when you are baptized, you cleanse yourself of who you are and take on the, once again, I'm going to say the attributes of him. Well, not you cleanse yourself, but you are cleansed. So you now believe that it is possible that it is through baptism that you take on the name of Christ. No, I ain't going to say that I believe. You told me to throw out anything, and that's what I'm doing. So that's the I'm first trying, thing that popped into yeah, your mind. Yeah, that's the first thing that popped into my mind. Okay, well, let's explore the source of that thought. And come over and let's look at a particular passage in the Shepherd of Hermes. From his book called Similitudes. We're going to start about halfway into verse 151. If you would 
read that for us. Okay. It was necessary, said he, for them to ascend by water, that they might be at rest. For they could not otherwise enter into the kingdom of God, but by laying aside the mortality of their former life. So this is talking about water, and it's talking about being able to go into the kingdom of God. And how it is necessary, what it says, to lay aside the mortality of their former life. Mm -hmm. Read Romans 52. They therefore being dead were nevertheless sealed with the seal of the Son of God and so entered into the kingdom of God. So here it is saying that we have to have the seal of the Son of God in order to enter the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now look at 153. For before a man receives the name of the Son of God, he is ordained unto death. But when he receives that seal, he is freed from death and assigned unto life. Okay, now let's slow down a little bit right here. Because it seems to be mixing stuff up a little bit. First is talking about receive the name of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Before the man receives the name of the Son of God... He is ordained unto death. Right? Mm -hmm. But then it says, But when he receives that seal, he is freed from death and assigned unto life. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's the relationship between the seal and the name? To me, looking at this verse, there is a connection being made between the name of the Son of God and this seal. Read it again. Okay, I'll start with 152 so I can get a better understanding of it. 152 says, They therefore being dead were nevertheless sealed with the seal of the Son of God, and so entered into the kingdom of God. For before a man receives the name of the Son of God, he is ordain ordained unto death. But when he receives that seal, he is freed from death and assigned unto life. Okay, it's saying that before we receive the seal of the Father, receive the, receive the seal, we are dead. Not literally dead, but in You're a state. You're on your way to death. You are yeah. assigned to death. Yeah, death. Death is death. You are ordained to death. Yeah, but when we receive that seal, when we get the seal of the Son of God, now we are freed from death. We we have death no longer has that grasp of, uh, upon us. We're no longer ordained to death. Yeah, and now we are assigned to live. Okay. Okay. Now you're saying there is a connection. Well, I'm looking. I'm reading here. It's saying. A man receives the name of the Son of God. Before he receives the name of the Son of God, he's ordained to death. Mm -hmm. well, but it doesn't say, but when he receives the name of the Son of God, it says, but when he receives that seal, right. he is freed from death. So you put them two together. Before the name of Christ, he's ordained to death. Put that in one column. Mm -hmm. But when he receives the seal... He is freed from death. Put that in the other column. So is it saying that the seal is receiving the name of the Son of God? That's what I'm saying here. Yeah. Do you, do you see something different? That, that, to, the, to me, it's saying that the seal is the name of God or the name of God. The seal is the name of the Son of God or the name of the Son of God is the seal. It seems as though they are the same. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Now look at verse 154. Now that seal is the water of baptism into which men go down under the obligation unto death, but come up upon it unto life. So the seal is baptism. Mm -hmm. So now we've added another element here, but I think they are all saying the same thing. So are you saying that 50, 153 would read, Before a man receives the name of the Son of God, he is ordained unto death. But when he receives that water baptism, he is freed from death and assigned unto life. That's absolutely true. We can find that written all over the scripture. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. But what we're working to understand here 
is through baptism the only way to receive the name of the Son of God? Is that how we get his name is through baptism? So we're saying, okay, we understand that that's one way, but is that the only way? Is that okay. what you're asking? Yeah. I mean, that's, how we, that's why we started off this class the way we did, establishing the way to get his name. And the only logical solution to that equation was through the intuition that you received that it was possible that it came through baptism. And now... I'm showing you the scripture to actually support that, I believe. I believe what this is saying is that through baptism is when we receive the name of Christ. I believe that that's what it's saying too. Because, well, 154 says that's what it's saying. Now that seal is the water of baptism. And I think 153, we have clearly see, well, we clearly see that it is saying that the seal is um, the name of the Son of God. I think. So the seal is the name of the Son of God, and we receive the seal through baptism, so we receive the name of God through baptism. Hmm, okay, so I see what you're saying. I see what you did, why you started off the way that you started, because so many times, and this is good for me too, because so many times we go in and we look up something and we take what we believe the experts opinion is <laughs> yeah of what say for instance in this this um this instance um uh, how to take on the name of god and so we go with what they believe I assume that they know what they're talking yeah about. instead of going to what the father said instead of going to his word we assume that they have went to the word they've done the work for us and us being sluggish and slowful lazy. and don't lazy don't want to go and do the research for us because we automatically think if you read the bible and you are so called scholar of the bible you've actually done the work and you know what you're talking about and that's why you got to read it for yourself that's why you got to read it for yourself and you got to have the holy spirit to help you yeah to get an understanding on this and i believe that's what's been going on with me for the last few days is trying to understand this part right here and i believe i finally do June the 8th, 2021, that in order for us to take on his name, we have to get baptized. I believe that this is the way that he was talking about. When the Messiah said, I am the way, mm -hmm. I believe that that way, that path starts with baptism. Mm, I know you pushes it a lot. Um, because the Father is pushing me to push it a lot. And I believe the reason behind that is that we are so late in the game that people are really needing to understand what this way is. And that there's so many people steering us astray, telling us this and telling us that, making up stuff as to you know what it, it means to take on the name of God, what it, mean, what it means to be saved and all of this. And the Father has written this stuff down for us in Scripture, but how many people know about verse 154 in the book called Similitudes out of the Shepherd of Hermes? You know, when you asked me that question at the beginning of this um, video, you said, um, what do you believe it means to take on the name of God? I think I was 99% sure of what my that my meaning was going to be correct. I was pretty confident. You know, I had my little story of my papa. <laughs> and you know what he he would say and whatever and so we just came and uh annihilated everything that i was thinking and i i believe that this is is saying that you know that is what and then i'm thinking also when we first moved down here and we actually started working you was doing the work before but when i actually started working toward getting a true understanding of the word um, and we got baptized. That is when I actually started, I want to say, hearing from the Holy Spirit and learning to, and he put me into the word of reading it for myself. Well, the same goes for me too. Back when, in 2015, when, you know, he inspired us to get baptized and we did, you know, that's when a lot of things changed for me, too, because I believe that was the first time that I really understood what baptism was. Before then, it was just men telling me to get baptized. But in 2015, 
he told me to do it and then it took on a whole nother meaning because I understood what baptism was all about whereas before I was just doing something that somebody else told me to do mm-hmm yeah but before we go let's look at a few verses over here out of the New Testament of the Bible and notice how many of these verses are talking about being baptized in the name. Right. Mm -hmm. Like Matthew 28 and 19, where he tells us to go forth baptizing people. Mm -hmm. And Acts, where, Acts 2 and 38, and where it says, Then Peter said unto him, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remissions of sin. So this seems to be saying that we are baptized in the name. Mm-hmm. So you think about what does that mean now? Yeah. After we after this understanding, that takes on a whole nother meaning. Yeah. Baptized in the name. And and not only that, it puts that seal on you. Yeah. When you think about getting baptized in the name, it's like when you get baptized, you come up with his name on you. Yeah. That takes on a new meaning to baptism because once you go down and you come up, you're like, I'm sealed. I'm yeah. good to go. Yeah, you do. And, you, of course, you got to work to keep that seal intact. You can mess it up. Oh, yeah. You know, if you don't understand um, the law and the covenant and what it is you're supposed to be doing, you can break that seal. That's why many of us have to get baptized again. I believe mm -hmm. I'm now on my fourth or fifth time being baptized because, you know, I'm kind of messed mine up a few times. But, praise the Father, we had that opportunity because... This is how we get his name. This, I believe, is the way. Matter of fact, going back over there to the shepherd of Hermas, I know it is the way because it says it back up there in verse 152. We're nevertheless sealed with the Son of God and so entered the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Entered so, into the yeah. kingdom of God. And that's the same thing down there in verse 155. It's talking about the seal and the kingdom of God. So when we're thinking about the way into the kingdom of God, the seal is absolutely necessary. And we see that the seal is baptism. So the way would have to be baptism. That is the way. Mm -hmm. hmm. And I was pretty confident, too. <laughs> I was pretty confident of my uh, studying and my papa and and. Well, that's what he means when he says he doesn't come to bring peace. Meaning he didn't come to let you settle on your ease and believe that you got it all right. He comes to bring a sword. Meaning he's gonna stir some of that stuff up so that the truth can get in. And that's necessary for the truth is that we have to start rejecting the falsehoods. Right. Could you imagine how many people there are out there thinking? that they have to take on the attributes of Christ in order to have his name, yet they don't know what the attributes of Christ is because they don't have this Holy Spirit and are unable to read the scripture and find out what those attributes are. It's like they got it it's like we got it backwards. Mm hmm And oh are rejecting baptism. Yeah, those that are rejecting baptism, I'm I'm a little bit, you know, weary of those guys because, you know, I often question, are they doing it intentionally? You know, when you tell people not to get baptized, you're standing behind the pulpit and you're telling people not to get baptized. Are you really intentionally steering them off the path? You know, are you are you doing it intentionally or are you just ignorant? You know, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I, I stay clear of those guys um, because the Messiah told us to go forth baptizing people. And, you know, that was one of the first things that he went through. And then one of the first things he taught was baptism. And it's extremely important. And even now we're finding out that baptism is the way. Mm. You look at verse after verse, it's saying baptism in the name of Christ. Uh, Acts 22 says, baptized and washed away the sins, calling the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Very enlightening. It's... um. 8.32, and I just learned something. We learn more before 9 o'clock than most people learn all day. Okay, we're going back to our military <laughs> days. <laughs> we praise the Lord for Hermes. And, you know, yeah. you, tell, you guys tell us what you think down in the comment section of this video. We'll go ahead, like we said, we'll give you links in the description. You can check these verses out for yourself. Get your understanding. That's the reason why I'm doing this class like this is because I'm not absolutely 100% sure 
But, you know, praise the Father, we have a lot of people that can actually get in to help us to understand what the truth is. Yeah. So, you know, let you guys jump down in the comment section and tell us what you think. Well, you say that you're not 100% sure, but, you know, seems like Scripture is directing us to the answer. And in modesty, I know you're saying that, you know, I don't know, but seem like scripture is saying, okay, yeah, this is it. Yeah, Hermes knows. <laughs> Shepherd of Hermes, he definitely knows, and I believe he's trying to tell us. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. If you got something out of this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment. Either way, tell us what you think. And shalom. Shalom.